Well, today on the bench, we have an Ego 56 volt battery pack again. And this time, I want to talk about the terminals on the battery, the T and the D terminal. I figured I would do one episode talking about T or the temperature uh, connection or terminal. And on the next video, I'll try to get into the D a little bit. And this is a, a pack full of together for reference. And this is what the pack would look like if we had a see-through view. It would truly be turned around similar to this. So this is a pack I had apart to uh, replace a bad cell. One that I had got that was already faulty. And uh, by the way, I have replaced the, uh, the Q12 on the BMS board. Um, as I showed in a previous video, one of my first videos actually on the Ego 56 volt, I had to repair that BMS board. Did a good bit of research and digging on that and figured that out and, and got a few packs to repair. This is one that I still have to put a sale in, but that'll be for another day. I've already did a video on that if you're interested. I get so many questions about the terminals on what T, what D is. If the battery pack starts reading when you press the button, this one, it'll start blinking orange after it turns green. So this is letting us know either we got a temperature problem. It could also be like an overload condition. So on this pack, I'm going to replace this cell and see if that goes away. If not, I got to look into the thermistors a little bit. But that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about today is the, the T terminal because I do get so many questions and I usually try to answer back to help people. When I do reply back, it's like paragraphs. And so, so this came out of the blower that we did default finding on. And we can see that it does have four blades, but we actually don't use the T. So some of the tools don't use the T. However, as far as I know, every tool uses the D. Even though I still don't have the information, I have no schematic, I have no contact that works with Ego. So a lot of this stuff I just learned because I wanted to learn more about it. We do know that the D, I assume is for detection, like temperature and then detection. So one thing I found out is the D, the boards actually talk to each other through it. The T, the tool really doesn't typically get the T. I don't know that um, like the lawnmower, because I hadn't had a lawnmower part. I don't know if the lawnmower does or not. I would think some of your heavier loads may get the T as well. However, with the T, I know the charger looks at T. And also, the battery pack has some other thermistors as well on the pack that does some monitoring. So the reason I have this pack here is I wanted to show these small black wires. I know I've showed these in previous repair videos, but these these two small black wires that are together here. We have one on these seven set and this seven set. So, cause you see these batteries are kind of two halves. We got seven in series with other seven in series giving us 14 cells. And they're connected together power wise. They're, each individual cell is monitored back to the BMS. And we know that each half has a thermistor here monitoring this part of the pack. And of course, a thermistor or NTC, a negative temperature coefficient device, has a little bulb here where it changes in resistance based on the temperature rise. And being an NTC means it's going to go down with the temperature increase, so the resistance will go down. So one thing I want to look at now, I'm going to take this BMS board off because I have already removed all the potting on this one, as in a previous video, and removed it from the, from the end of the battery pack. Remove the silicone that held the connectors in place. As you can see the white residue here, just white silicone. So we can actually look at it a little bit better. And I even have a blown up picture here that you can pause and look at it as future reference. So if we look at the way this plugs in here, and the way this lines out for minus, T, D, and plus. So we have minus. And T is going to be our blue. And D is going to be our green. So either one of these two on the right. And then the third one. And there's our nine point right at 4K showing there on these pins. And that'll work with either one of the two right ones. So if we look here at RT2, we see that the, the two black negative wires from the battery pack come in on these two terminals here. And this negative comes across and hits the top of RT2. 
and it just simply goes across and RT2 returns back to this third pin. So around ambient temperature we should read somewhere around 10K. So we're getting somewhere around 10K. Now I'm, I'm going to actually hold my finger over this for just a minute or so here. I may pause the video and come back. So we see we get a decrease in resistance with a temperature rise. Showing us that it is a NTC as we suspected. And one reason, one reason I figured it was an NTC was um, as mentioned in previous videos where these other NTCs come and tie in. We have an NTC low and an NTC high here. That's one reason I knew that um, the pack also monitored each cell half with NTCs. One takeaway from the video, you can take a pack without even opening it up and being careful you can ohm between the negative and the T and you will see that around 10K ohms. One of these was out in the garage when I got it so the temperatures are going to be a little different right now but there's going to be a little bit of difference in them anyway. They're, they're not perfect but somewhere around 10 to 13K is typically what I read just with them in an ambient temperature not been under a load or anything being used just sitting in the ambient temperature say 70 degrees or so 70 degrees Fahrenheit that's something you can actually check on your pack without going into it however if you're getting some other temperature fault or flashes on your BMS that may be a temperature fault you're gonna have to go a little bit further and you're gonna have to look at these two the way these plug in, as we said before, you got your two, your two black leads there, your two here together as a thermistor. And if we check these out of circuit, we should get around 10K. And they should read close. So one's about 10.4. One's right at 10. I have been handling this one when I dug it out and just show what the, the end of the NTC look like here. But that's still fairly close. It should be done equalized pretty good. So that's the best way to check the NTCs because with these plugged up, if I traced it out right. So if we look at the NTC traces here and where they go, we see uh, NTC underscore L or lower pack because as mentioned in a previous video, we see our monitoring coming in from B1 around to B7. So I guess the lower, the lower side, a lower half pack. And then as we mentioned over here, we start off at um, B8 all the way to B14. So that's where these wires are going from the individual cell monitoring and uh, distributed out here on our, on our low and our high side. So we have our, our 10K reading where we're getting from the NTC that we'll plug in here on these two terminals for our our low and then high respectively on this side we got these two terminals here and I've traced these out through vias all the way through some resistors and the high side goes to U5 which is also an 8-bit a proprietary microcontroller it looks like we trace out our low side it goes over to our U3 which is what we discussed before being a uh, also an 8-bit proprietary microcontroller so but I wanted to do a quick video on the terminals and what to check if you're having some kind of battery temperature issue and you don't think your pack is typically overheating it's probably worth mentioning that um, if you haven't seen one of my other videos that I have showed where some of these sleeves have melted and you could tell they didn't have the sharp corners on the heat shrink here where this um, where this phase changing material, state changing material here for um, your sleeves for cooling, when they get kind of rounded or flattened, you can tell that they have actually melted and actually changed the phase. So the battery actually probably heated up pretty good in that in that case to make that sleeve uh, melt down. So I hope this video was helpful uh, figuring out the T terminal. I think that's long enough for this video. 
If you're interested in the D terminal, stay tuned for the next video. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.